In this video, I'll show you how to make a glass texture, but first I'll teach you how to taper something. First, select the object and go to edit mode. From here, you can move a vertice by clicking move. To taper it to a precise radius, you'll need a second cylinder that's the same radius you want to taper it to. The second cylinder is the same radius I want to taper the first cylinder to. What you do is grab a few vertices, then move them until they line up with the other radius. This method isn't very precise, but it's how I used to do it in GMAX. I found it's way more precise to use a cone instead of a cylinder, and here's why. With a cone, you can choose the radius of the base and the top simultaneously. Radius 1 is the base, and radius 2 is the top radius. Once finished, you can delete the second cylinder which you were using as a temporary ruler. The finished product is a tapered cylinder. Now it's time to make the lens for the lighthouse. I haven't made the glass texture yet, so you're going to see the full process. One problem I've had with glass textures in Strange 2019 is this. A glass texture behind another one becomes invisible from the outside, especially when water is behind it. This cylinder will become the base of the first order for Nell lens, the largest of six types. This is the albedo texture I'll be using to make the lens, called the fuse in GMAX. In Trains 2019, you need a total of three textures, the albedo, the normal map, and the parameter texture. You'll have to download an add-on to make normal maps in GIMP. There's a good tutorial of this on YouTube, so I'll place it in the description. First, open the texture you want to create a normal map for, the albedo texture. In the top right menu, click on Colors, Desaturate, then click OK. Next, click Colors, Curves. You want to add as much detail as possible by providing contrast. This will make the end product look more detailed. Normal maps make a texture look more bumpy, giving off the illusion that it has more layers. Click Filters map and normal map to open the normal map generator you'll need the normal map add-on to do this the tutorial i linked in the description explains how to install it don't forget to add an alpha channel by right clicking on the image and clicking add alpha channel I usually up the scale until you can see the details in the plane. The plane gives you an idea of what the normal map will do to the end texture. Once satisfied with the image, click OK and it'll generate a normal map for you. Next, export it by clicking File, Export As. Normally, I use .tga files for normal maps, but I've heard that .png files also work in Trains 2019. To make them easier to find, I named my normal maps the same name as the albedo plus a hyphen and the word normal. Make sure it's uncompressed. Trains does not like compressed anything. The parameter texture is a lot more complex, so listen carefully. You'll need four colors for the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha channels. The red channel is emissive, white if you want it to emit light, black if you don't. The normal and parameter texture must be the same size as the albedo. If the albedo is 512 by 512, the normal and parameter must also be 512 by 512. The textures you use for the parameter must also be the same size. The green channel is roughness. 
It's a gray scale with colors between black and white. I think this tells the game how sensitive you want it to be when shining light on the texture. Black goes on the left, then a few shades of gray in the middle gradually getting lighter the further right you go. White on the right. The blue channel is Oculent Occlusion. It tells the game how the texture should react to sunlight in midday in cloudy weather. Oddly specific. I usually use beige for this and haven't had any issues. When opening the textures, open them as a layer. File, open as layer. Open each texture as a layer. The alpha channel is metallic. It also controls shininess. It is a grayscale texture. One person told me the more black the texture is, the more metallic slash shiny it is. Someone else told me the inverse of that, white. I'm not sure which one is correct, so just experiment until you get the results you want. Shades of gray are also accepted. To save time, you can also copy the same parameter texture for use in other similar textures. Go to the top menu and click Image, Mode, Grayscale. Click Colors, Components, Compose, and a menu opens up. This is how you assign the images to their respective channels. Click the drop down menu and select RGBA. Red is emissive, it won't emit light, so make it black. Green is roughness. Blue is ambient occlusion, and alpha is metallic. Once everything is where it should be, click OK. The end result will either be a transparent texture, or a semi-transparent one with various shades of blue. Now export it as a .tga or .png. I usually name it the name of the Albedo texture plus a hyphen and the word parameter. If you can't get to this texture screen, click shading on the top menu. Make sure the object you want a texture is selected. To texture something, we need a material. To make one, click on that symbol that looks like a world. Click new, then name the material texture name .m .glass. Glass materials have to end in .m .glass. For most other materials, .m .pbr metal should work. I can't find a complete list of all the materials Trains 2019 will accept. So for now, I'm only using .m .pbr metal or .m .glass. Click here to open the textures we'll assign to the object. In the first part of this tutorial, I explained what to do if the texture doesn't show. Link in the description. Your texture screen should now look like this if you have an untextured object selected. Click Add, Texture, Image Texture. It would have been nice if the Trains Wiki mentioned how to do this. Then just click where you want it to be placed. Click Open to open a texture. This is where the Albedo texture goes. Next, use the left mouse button to drag a line from color to base color. And it is textured before our very eyes. Textures don't always appear as expected in Blender. A map can help with that. We'll cover that in a later part. Just like last time, click Add, Texture, Image Texture. This will become the Parameter Texture. Next, we open the Parameter Texture. Then we draw a line from Alpha to Roughness. Look at that shine! Marvelous! Absolutely amazing! But caution, the texture sometimes looks slightly different in trains.
For normal maps, there are a couple extra steps. Click Add, Vector, and Normal Map. Click the drop down menu here and click UV Map, the only option. If this option doesn't appear, you may have to delete the material and start over. Some weird glitch. Then add yet another image texture. This will be the normal map. Open the normal map image. Draw a line from color to color. And then on this side, draw a line from normal to normal. And now the texture is rough and bumpy and it looks as though it has several layers. Technically, you can alter how the texture looks by entering numbers in these parameters, but it will not change how the texture looks in trains, so don't even bother. Unlike GMAX, the texture doesn't always appear like I'd expect. The only way to fix this is to edit the texture until I achieve the desired effect. The texture looks great, so I'll leave it here. Thanks for watching this Blender Trains tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will cover making glass for the lantern room. By the way, the Bodhi Island Lighthouse is on the download station, so if you're interested, you can download it and give it a try. I also have the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse on the download station as well.